Call us main door. Just a quick, real quick uh, update before we get started. The uh, student from West High School was located in Tiffin. Uh, so the uh, police in Tiffin. So I just want to make sure you were all aware of that. First time on the agenda is to serve as Sure. We'll get uh, rolling here. So uh, we've got several documents uh, attached uh, in uh, board docs. Uh, and uh, We've got uh, uh, a couple of things for you to look at. I'm going to pull the main sheet up. Uh, Craig and Dwayne are here, and they're going to help walk, me, walk you through it with me. Uh, but uh, we wanted to give you a, a one-page summary, if you will, so you can take a look at it, hopefully better understand uh, where we're at, where we think we're going with it. So if you look at uh, the items, I'll blow this up a little bit, like you've seen. Uh, the items at the top of the page here uh, in peach and purple. Uh, are uh, those items that uh, have been completed or are in process that are funded through our save and pebble dollars. Uh, save items in peach, pebble dollars in purple. Uh, at the bottom there you see both the initial approval uh, in December of 13, uh, the updated approval in April of 15. Uh, good opportunity right here to remind you that these projects when they were initially approved in 13, uh, were not approved in an order. They were simply approved as these were the projects that we wanted to complete. So as we began completing those and building out a timeline, one of the things that we did in 15 was knowing which uh, projects went at the end of the list. Uh, we went through and applied the appropriate uh, construction inflation uh, factor to that, and hence you see the differential uh, in the projected costs at the bottom. Uh, and then uh, over here, January 17, where we are today, uh, you see there the uh, actual costs uh, completed and in progress. Uh, finally, on the far right-hand side, you see the start dates uh, for each of those projects. So again, those are the projects that are uh, completed or in progress right now. Uh, as we scroll down here, this next set of green projects are those projects that were part of the facility master plan in 2013, projected value here. Uh, the revised projections uh, in 2015 and what we'd like to talk about tonight uh, is in the far column, which is the 2017 plan. Uh, those items that are in green, uh, that uh, maintain the consistent color across there, you'll note uh, the same date and the same dollar amount uh, as was projected in 2015. Um, those items in gray uh, have either had their timeline changed, you see that on the far side, uh, or in that uh, second from the right-hand column, you see a change in the scope and scale of the project uh, which could be up or down. Uh, for instance, you see Garner moving down, uh, you see uh, the New North Liberty Elementary moving up. Uh, and so uh, we've got uh, projected revisions in there. Uh, again, in 2015, when that was approved by the board, uh, that uh, price tag uh, was coming in at uh, just under 191 million. Uh, the revised price tag we have in here is coming in just over 184 million. Uh, and so uh, with that uh, as a real quick uh, brief introduction, uh, to where we're at tonight, I think I'll stop uh, and ask if you have questions. I just want to say one thing. So on 13, they weren't in order, they weren't uh, inflation adjusted, and we were still working the athletics plan. Right? So Correct. 13, Correct. there was two big things. Adjusted for inflation, added to the athletics master plan in the future. <coughs> yep. And then put in order. Right. Um, right. Just, just to clarify, so that last column, is that when the project starts or when it's done? This is when it starts. Okay. Those are start dates. So what, what's the explanation for the new North Liberty Elementary being cheaper? Well, I, I, I can answer that one. I actually <coughs> went back through the, the estimated costs and reevaluated the square footage that we needed, and it, it lowered the cost. It was, it was plus, plus 15, it was given five years inflation, it should only hit three. So the scope change, or is it just for just, just adjust for inflation and cost per square foot. Oh, it's not lower square feet. So no, scope, the no. scope is the same. I just went through and evaluated the construction costs, plus I adjusted their proper inflation. So the scope is the same. The scope is the same. Okay, so with some of these that are sooner or later, is the difference in the number simply because of the inflation factor? Some of it. Mm -hmm. So like one sample, for example, is that going to be a different project, or is it just because it's sooner that it costs less? Uh, sooner plus, I also reevaluated the cost, and it was, <laughs> and it was overinflated too. Addressed <laughs> so We can do language a little. That's fine. Garner would be an example for you uh, done later, which you would assume would cost more, but the scope and scale was reduced, so it costs less. So nothing is changing at North Central? No. no it's it's same. So if it starts in 19, when's it done? Most projects last a year, year and a quarter. Well, I assume a year, but is that 
Okay, okay so I'm well, except for the high schools, it is. No, yeah. all right. So if it starts at 19, it's going to be down to 20. Should be. All right. We intend to hold it true to form. We did provide a document with um, uh, that's a summary of all of these changes. And uh, it elaborates a little bit more on the scope of uh, what's being done. Uh, this document uh, here. So, but you'll notice that um, we've uh, moved man back to its original timeline on the facility master plan. Uh, from what we were thinking, uh, we took a look at that, and uh, 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 we were fortunate to have uh, uh, our city come in and and uh, talk with us a little bit more about working and the partnership that we can have and things like that. We think. Uh, we'll be able to uh, do Lincoln and Man together now, uh, like we were before. So we're going to keep that on schedule, and also a Shimmick, where we were originally thinking that it was going to take two construction years. Um, uh, Dwayne and his wizardry to, uh, figured out that uh, we would be able to put the ten plex over there, and so uh, uh, that one we were able to move back to its original timeline and uh, be able to uh, uh, move enough of the students out where we could renovate the building uh, within that year time frame that we were thinking of originally. So um, those were two things that we were able to settle for the most part on uh, uh, that we had recommended or had conversation with you here recently about some of our concerns that we might have to change, but I think we settled in our minds that we, we can go back to the original plan on those ideas. Can you tell us what made the number on man go down? Yeah, I was just evaluating the costs that were assigned to the building and the inflation factors, and I just went, I went back from square one and just refigured it. Same project, though. Same project. Are you using Longfellow as a reference, or what's Longfellow as a reference. So Longfellow will come in on your budget? It did. It will. Okay. Yes, one time. You want to ask about Shimmy? I, I do. Just because Gristle Place is a choked arterial, I just <laughs> want to know. Do you, we have a back well, copy of There's a couple of things there. Shimmy was located in the Templex on the site. Uh-huh. So Savannah and I think the school principal met yesterday and we we're gonna go to the PTO and ask them to relocate the playground in a different location. The Templex will go where that wooden structure is now and it will fit. Oh. And once you get to the parking lot it's almost level back to that playground. Sure. Okay, so that's one issue. The other is Gristle Place and there's kind of a high center there if you bring a long trailer and it's gonna want to dip. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking I'm just going to build a temporary ramp on top of the street and flatten it out and leave it up there. It'll work. That's wizardry. Well, we'll I haven't got it done yet. That's why I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked the whole site yesterday and, and walked the street out and just said, we can do it. it wow. That's awesome. We may only move two houses and six telephone poles, but we'll get there. <laughs> no, Cut saying. down a few Can trees. <laughs> Kidding you. <laughs> I know, I know, just kidding. <laughs> no, I think we can do it. The seven tree forest? Yeah. The seven tree forest will not be touched. <laughs> um, going back to man, I know there was some talk about the parking and maybe alternatives to creating the parking lot and did those talks go anywhere? Yeah, we actually uh, we met today uh, with uh, city officials, uh, elected and appointed, and uh, we're very confident uh, that uh, we will be able to come up with several uh, iterations of potential uh, facility uh, improvements that uh, we'll be able to take a look at logistically uh, internally uh, within the, the city and the uh, school district officials, but then also uh, externally uh, as we go out and reach out to the community to help them in the design process. So uh, our, our discussion today focused on uh, looking at current footprint, modified, and modified plus. So we've got a couple of different options out there to look at. Uh, and uh, looking at how we can work with them uh, as partners to uh, make sure that we get to the equitable learning environment that we want for all the students, but do so in a way that's uh, respectful of the neighborhood and the integrity of the, the historical components that are part of North Market Park. So, that, are the results of that going to potentially change any of these numbers? I, not significantly. Uh, the goal still is to make sure that the internal uh, structure that uh, provides that uh, educational environment uh, is uh, compatible with what we're doing in other buildings. 
Uh, as we look externally, we had long conversations about parking uh, and options for parking, uh, hardscape, hardscape and softscape uh, play areas for students, um, bus pickup and drop off, uh, parent parking, ADA parking. Uh, so we had lots and lots of conversation today about uh, multiple different options that may be available to us. Uh, we have some uh, tasks that were sent back to the city uh, to take a look at. They actually have to have some conversations with the county and the state level for a couple of the solutions that we propose. Um, we're going to go back into it on our end and look for a uh, uh, comparability uh, footprint uh, design pieces uh, as it compares to Longfellow so that you actually visually see what the, uh, the footprint might look like and what our options might be going uh, north and west and south. So uh, we're going to try to put all that together. We actually talked to the uh, city council today about having a joint work session uh, with the school district and the city councilors uh, so that uh, we can share uh, some of those iterations and get some feedback both from you as board members and from them as city councilors. So how soon would we have something that we could actually look at and see? Uh, we're hoping to have it uh, either just before or just after spring break. So the, the meeting that we're talking about with the city is we're trying to coordinate uh, calendars at the beginning of April. So hopefully uh, we'll be ready to roll uh, prior to that point in time. So just for, I'm just going to so the meeting was myself, Latasha, Mary Thornburg, and Susan Nunes, Jeff, Steve, Craig, Dwayne, and I agree. I think we had common objectives that timeline needs to maintain. We talked the uh, uh, joint work session and then also just reinforced, you know, we will go through a design process. That will be later, right? Mm -hmm. That will engage the community and what we always do our teachers and organization and everything else. So we talked about that, having a very collaborative design process. Because it could be you'll take four options, of, you know, I mean, there, could, there could be multiple, well, you will have multiple options mm -hmm. in the design. Right. And um, there's some key questions to see. We'll need to weigh in on them. There's some key questions we'll need to weigh in on. But uh, very, uh, Constructive meeting to make sure that uh, we're aligned with the timeline. So that's very much so for tonight. There's one more sheet um, that, that we put together for you Brian, as far as okay. okay. one one quick one. It's, it's often it's not an, even a very big project on our FMP um, simply because there was a major renovation done prior to the FMP process, and it's, it's involving Horn Elementary School. Um, there were some questions at one of our listening our first listening post. Uh, regarding corn, um, that just just a comment that on the the need transforming the learning environment timeline, that corn was <coughs> overlooked on that. Um, so if we can get that added back on, that would be great. I think it's a simple add. Um, I know it's only about a one one point three million dollar project. Um, and the only other thing that I that I've heard Dwayne, just because this is probably my last opportunity to have it put into this, is I know that when we did the renovation at Horn, there was some flooring used in a portion of the, of the building. I don't know if it would be part of Pepple or part of FMP, but um, there's been, they've used like hard surface flooring instead of, uh, or. Um, they used the Mondo flooring? Yes, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And. Um, They're having issues with it? Yeah. Well, I think it's, <clears throat> I've, I've been, that it's not desirable. I'll, I'll go again. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's a, that's a great segue. The next uh, sheet that uh, Craig was referencing is this uh, page that's listed as future facility projects for uh, consideration. And so these are things that were not approved in 13, not discussed in 15. Uh, but as we move forward, there are things that uh, we presume at some point in time the board's going to want to address. So there's no proposal here that these are the kinds of things that need to be added. Uh, to the facility master plan uh, as you consider the bond, but they are things that we think uh, that as a board you just need to be cognizant of moving forward because as you look at a rolling 10-year plan for the facilities master plan, you're going to want to add these uh, in subsequent years such that they can get calendared uh, and we can be prepared for them. Well, we could add them in a the time term of time. Do that? Right. And they don't need to be part of the geo mark per se. But right. I'm just saying, in 2013, in July, we approved the plan to help that. So you could say we're to, you know we're aligned with projects sure. to land and odds are they'd happen later in the plan. You could add them to the plan but not add them to the bond. Or just tend not to find the time. Yeah. Can you just help me understand why Tate has no gym? 
does it make the list? We have Tate again. Uh, I go back here. Uh, replacing gyms, we're adding third gyms. And then we have a school of so, gyms. So Tate, uh, the gym that uh, in the classrooms that we're proposing were not in the 2013 original plan. So we have not added anything to the plan. Uh, so when you look at the 15, again, that's the roll up in the, the projections and the addition of the athletics, which were part of that discussion at that point in time. So we haven't proposed adding anything to it. These are things that we want you to consider. But what you saw in that initial sheet uh, are only those things that were on the plan in 15. So these are things that we think are important. Uh, and that would include the gymnasium and the extra classrooms at Tate. Uh, there's several other projects in here that uh, uh, we're very invested in. Um, but they weren't part of that 15 uh, piece, and so uh, we didn't take the liberty to add them to it. We want them uh, here for your consideration. As Chris said, if you want to add them, wonderful. If you want to... I think that should... Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess you tell me what I'm missing here, but I don't get why we would take a school that has zero athletic space, you know? I mean, during the winter, they're, they don't have anything. No. Um, and, and we would... That would be like top of the list. And we do all our PD offsite right now, so we're very fortunate. We've got some wonderful community partners, metal boxes, and others that are uh, uh, working with us to uh, create uh, that opportunity for our students, uh, but nothing uh, that's uh, indoor space. And that's, you know, offsite is, you know, okay, but um, exactly I guess there's some kids okay. that take that would appreciate having a place indoors for awesome skiing. Yeah. Just as they do at, at our other schools. No difference. Yep. 100% agree with that. But just because it's not in the geo bond doesn't mean we couldn't do it on safe or better. Safe, but if it passes. Um, well, no, I would no, I, I no, guess. Let's stop there, no. I mean, there's there's only so much we borrow against save every year. And if we do this geo bond, you could do things on safe or better without necessarily extension. No, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I have no problem moving. Uh, Tate up to uh, to be able to do a bond and move it up and down. So I'm not disagreeing. I'm just making sure that we understand if we say this is all in the bond and the geo bond passes, there's still a couple of save available. So, for example, if we if a future school board decided I want to accelerate these, there will be some save a couple dollars available as well. Not that we need to feel like we need to put everything in the bond just because we're ready to so I'm saying you can do it better both. Now, is anybody not aligned to move Tate into the geo bond and the plan? Can you tell me a little bit more about the couple piece of it? I'm just saying because if we already are telling our community 200 million and then we're adding three. 184. 184. One. What? It went down. Oh, I'll went down. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading wrong. Around about. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just saying that's great that we were able to bring that down if we could put that on there fine but I mean it'd be great also to start thinking about how we're using a couple as well as as well as the geo bond I think it's important that in this planning that we're also talking about how that couple is being used for us. So and half the pebble gets used in just the life cycle fund alone right so oh yeah I mean, I'm just saying it's not like there's zero dollars it's not like there's a lot you know right it's not like you take them all and do it no I'm just I'm just saying like I think it's important that we're still, okay, geo bond over to the side, what are we still doing with those, you know, the couple dollars that we have available? And I think that that would be a great way to also invest in, in, in that gymnasium. So, so the, the discussion of addition of gymnasium and Tate actually keeps in line with the original 2013 plan, which was athletic study yet to be TBD. So we didn't have the athletic study at that point. In 2015, we had the athletic uh, data, but we did not have Tate incorporated into that. It was. I think it's within the spirit. I think it's absolutely it's within, within, the, it's within the spirit. Right. I think it's in, within the 2000. That's what I'm getting at. I think it's within the 2013 spirit. It's not mission creep. It's not that we're adding, adding, adding. It's that we're keeping with the athletic portion. It was 2013 FMP with the athletics TBD. A lot of and, and I'm not going to defend the assessments that were done, but I think there was probably a lack of knowledge on those architects that went through and the engineers as to the real purpose of Tate and how it's used as an alternative school. Right. And it's evolved over time. Because so. at the time they just said minor repairs. 
Right. It was 108000 dollars Yeah. Minor repairs. But the way the school is used is more significant than what they may have taken. I get it. Did you guys at all talk at time after today? Or was it just no, we did not talk time before. So that could be This Borlaug item, so that's like an, in addition to, there is a Borlaug addition in the FMP already, right? There's a very small number allotted for Borlaug. This is an additional work. Do we still have 100 seats going on there that weren't already there? Yes. Well, I guess if we re repurpose that to art and music, if we let the other two rooms in there. Well, the art and music is what's in this right. post plan. That's so what the school is that moving what was going to happen to Borlaug off into the future? Well, I, I guess that recommendation came from me. There, there, there was four classrooms. We looked at the projected enrollments. I don't know that you're really going to need them right away, but what they do need is the art and science, and if you do that, it will, you'll free up two classrooms and increase the capacity by 50. When, but you got the idea that we're going to put new music and art on every building? Well, I think, I think my recommendation would be to the board. <coughs> to any changes to facility master plan from this point going forward is that you really look closely at the art and music rooms because what I've done as a result of the template study is that they're, they're sorely deficient in most of the older buildings. The newer buildings, they're, not, they're okay, they're not as large as they should be, but they could be better. So I think from this point forward, that that's, it's, it's better to look at the specialty spaces and, and then repurpose those spaces into classrooms. It's a, so Part of our, yeah, it's maybe a better way to think about that, uh, Chris, is that uh, in our dialogue, when we've said if a building needs two new classrooms, that the building is better off if the two new classrooms that are built are art and music, and art and music are repurposed into uh, uh, gen ed classrooms. So rather than building two new classrooms and leaving art and music where they are, we build new art and music classrooms and repurpose the art and music into gen ed. So you get two additional classrooms, but you get two uh, uh, curriculum-specific classrooms for art and music. There's one other advantage, Steve, and that, that is the location of them. Because what I've learned is that most of the older schools are using modular classrooms for the band because of the noise. And you can, you can put them onto the end of a building and isolate them with a couple of doors and kind of isolate the noise as well. I mean, I guess what worries me about that is sort of what you were saying, which is we don't know if we're going to need two new classrooms at all at Borlaug <coughs> six years out. Yeah, but I think some, some of the additions are based on capacity and some are based on program. Just to me, it's based on program. But it also then needs to be different from what you were just saying. Yeah, so we're going to build the two new rooms if we need two new classrooms. Yeah, it's both. And then we'll call them a different yeah. room. You get both this way. You get it, it really grow and you get the pro proper program space. So maybe, can I just, maybe I'm confused. Uh, same page maybe as you are. So the 1.6 million Borlaug that's in the 2022 that says on this sheet that mm -hmm. it's classroom addition, HVAC, uh, upgrades. How is that different again from the Future project, future want. Is it going to happen? Now? Or what was it? Uh, so, oh, in 15, in 15, the plan was to add four classrooms. Right. Okay. So, what we're saying now is that you can add science and, or excuse me, art and music. I need to go back and look at my notes to make sure. But you're saying all of that would occur past the seven year rent card that we have or whatever. All the, yeah, the news. are supposed to happen within mm -hmm. that time. Take it out, put it off into the future for. Well, so, like, I know you have 2022, right? Borlaug. And then on this right. slide, we have Borlaug with adding music and art rooms 1.974. So that's. That's two, two and two. So. That's four rooms. The number 1.9 would be four rooms. And to, to make that kind of comparison, we did four uh, preschool and kindergarten rooms at Van Allen just recently, and four rooms cost us to make four, and that's been two years ago, so the main nine's right. Okay, I'm still not getting it. I'm What's thinking that I need to go back and, make, and re, re, read my notes and make sure that this included, I know it included 
renovated two rooms inside the building, but it may have been two rooms in addition to the art and music, based on the number. So I'll go back and look, make sure. Okay, so four rooms. Two four rooms two. total. Two and two instead of four. Got it. Is it more efficient to do it all at one time? You why, why would you split it up? You put two on one end and two on the other. You don't have to put all four together. So they wouldn't be at the same location? There would be so some cool. efficiency, but not a lot. So you're wondering you would throw two different times. I'm still a little... <coughs> Based on the number, what I'm telling you is I need to go back and reevaluate okay. my notes, but I'm thinking that with, at one time that it's two plus two. Because you can present it, it has to be that way. Yeah. And yeah. we have enrollment projections that support the need for that? Uh, looking at the projections on Borlaug, and you know, it's 10 years out since 327. The capacity we have on it right now is 451. I know, I know I don't take those without a grain of salt. But, so here's uh, how the real world's going to work. The enrollment report is not great for new development. Say again. The enrollment report's not great for new development, right? It's based on the, the kids you got there now and, and indexing them. In enrollment or the projections? The projection both. The projections do not account for new development. At all? For the most part. Isn't that what they're supposed to do for us? Yes. So. What about all the counting plats? And yeah, that's what's going, going on. on. That's that's the, that's the, so, yeah, yeah. So there's an element of that, but it generally yeah. is not as accurate when you've got new developments. I'm not disagreeing, because I know those numbers are 10 years out. I don't have any stock here. I would just say I have no concern with its own more water based on the amount of water. How are you going to defend it to the public that says, well, why are you putting more seats in the school when your enrollment's way below the capacity in the building? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I got the criteria for the German projections is on page three of the enrollment report. Well, but the enrollment report. At least in some schools, the numbers are significantly higher than just the age progression. Which is part of so they must be trying to show growth of some kind. I just I pulled up the Swiss Army sheet. It's either or. You're either doing one or the other. Uh, so it's an addition of 100 seats, and it's either four classroom uh, addition or music and art plus two classrooms. So that's what's that's what this is. So it's this or that. What's the this? The 1.7 million? Yeah. Or the 1.9 million? Right. Right. The reason it's higher is because those two rooms will cost a little bit more to build than two classrooms. They'll be a little bit bigger. So if you're going to do it in 22, you just. Uh, so it's not two projects. It's an either or. So we decide whether we take it out or we don't. Well, the recommendation is to go from four classrooms to two plus two. That doesn't say two plus two. It just says two. It, it doesn't, and I, I inadvertently left it off. And I have to go back and read my chart. So, but it's based on the number. I can tell you it's two plus two. So you probably should just take this one point seven million and apply it and make it one point nine. It'd be a smart time to do it. So um, I, I'm trying to understand. I, I did not realize that the projections did not include. Development. I missed that. What was the conversation? The, the projections don't include new developments. That, that was new to me. Enrollment yeah. projections? Yeah. Enrollment projections uh, include new developments that can be calculated. So think around uh, Liberty High School. So where there are developers who have purchased property, planted that property, uh, we've got an idea of how many uh, uh, individual sites there are, and they can uh, calculate a yield rate for that, and they, they can give us then an anticipated uh, load for that. Um, for undeveloped property, though, uh, that hasn't been platted, they don't uh, forecast growth for that particular. So think about around uh, uh, North Liberty on the west side of uh, 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 Liberty, right? There's there's uh, quite a few 40s out there that are still being farmed. So those don't carry any yield for us. So we, we know where developments uh, have been um, <coughs> approved by the city or platted, uh, the plats have been approved and we can calculate the yields on those and those are included in projections, but undeveloped land is not included. 
So, eat, and that's one of the reasons why you do it every two years because a lot of developers are purchasing land and platting it in advance of the actual building. But we're not, we're, here we're saying we're not going to, we're going to lock it in. We're not going to do it every, we're not going to decide, we can't change mine. After we, after it's in the bond, it's in the bond. Same as everything else, it's five, six years old. Yeah, but there's other places where there's developments too that are coming that, I mean, how do we know which, which is going to be the most, the biggest priority two years from now, four years from now, six years from now? <coughs> it's only been two years. Just another comparable for you. If you look at the, the list that's up there now, the very first project, Alexander Elementary, that's a four classroom addition for 1.5 million. And that we need today. We need that today. Because yeah, I've got a bond for it and it created two classrooms in the building. So, but the point I'm making is that it was just an oversight of my part. Four classrooms is about a million and a half. But if you add the art, it goes to one million. Okay? Can we talk about Shrek? Maybe not so much the building per se, but about what those changes look like at West and will. I mean, there's this excitement that happens, right, when there's this moving to this new building or this new building, right? There's excitement. And so I don't want to leave these kids. I mean, some of them won't even. You, Trek is kind of, you know, you don't know. I mean, the homeschool folks, I understand, and their perspective as a person, you know, we've been there. Um, but like, can we talk about what that looks like when they're transitioning over to the high school? Can there be parking available for folks that are, you know, visiting? You know, sure, and that maybe uh, from conversations that uh, I've had with Matt, with Craig, with Dwayne, with others in the district, if you want to jump the gun and say West is uh, where you're sending programs per se. Um, one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at the programming inside Trek and, and maybe just, uh, and I, I'm sure many of you are aware of this, but maybe just a quick reminder for you. So when the board decided to close Roosevelt and reapportion those attendance areas when they opened Borlaug, uh, there was initial discussion about disposing of the building. Uh, and after quite some time and a lot of indecision, uh, there was a determination not to dispose of the building. Uh, and at that point in time, owning it and maintaining it, uh, we looked at what alternatives there were for the space. Uh, and we had many off-site programs. A lot of them were in storefronts um, around Iowa City. We were paying rent on those. Um, we had concerns about lack of secretarial support, lack of access to food service, mail delivery, uh, all that that, uh, that comes with being in a school. And so we uh, uh, capitated our, our rents on those storefronts um, and aggregated all those programs under one roof. Uh, and I think sometimes that's, that's lost to people who don't know that history, is that there are a lot of different programs, very different purposes within there. And so from that standpoint, there might be some that are better situated at a high school. There might be some that are better situated at a junior high. There might be some that are better situated at Tate. There might be some that are better situated uh, off-site completely um, and so we're going to go through that process uh, and and to be honest with you the lead testing brought that to the fore uh, when we started looking at the concerns that came up through the lead testing we started talking about the money that we had allocated uh, for Roosevelt we know that that's really a band-aid uh, we actually back in 13 they did an analysis of the, the building in terms of what it would cost to bring it up to speed you're talking over 10 million dollars so what we had in here was a, a piecemeal that would allow us to hold our ground, if you would, but not make the kind of improvements that actually provide the kind of learning environment we want for those students. And so we looked at that and said, is that a wise investment of district dollars? Or as we expand the number of seats that are available at the secondary level, should we start looking at, at space that's available there and look at new homes for those programs? And that's everything from our homeschool program you know, we've got kids at Trek that are, are school phobic. You know, is, is putting them back into a school building going to help them with that transition or not? So we need to think about those kinds of things. So we just started the dialogue about if we begin to look at those programs with the individual hats that they wear, where might we best place those? So we're really in the embryonic stages of having that conversation. Uh, and, and like I said, it really came to the fore as we went through the water testing. and so. We have this on here because we want you to think about it like we are in the sense that should we start planning for the closure of Trek 
and the uh, replacement of those programs in other district facilities or other facilities? And if so, we're going to ramp that process up. Uh, but uh, we wanted to put that out here so that uh, we could have that conversation with you. Uh, you know, we're increasingly concerned about uh, what could be long-term safety issues with students there. Um, we already have all kinds of issues with heating and cooling and other stuff like that. Um, so we know that those are, are challenges that we're going to face moving forward. So our recommendation to you is that we start looking at new homes for those programs. But just like with Transition Services Center, that's a collaborative process. It involves discussion with staff, uh, other municipal entities in town. You know, we work with JCO, others like that. We need to talk to them about it too. Uh, but we didn't want to get too far down that path until we had the conversation with you guys first. Well, and I think it's important to, um, I believe the initial study on the building was done by Shy Pattery. Uh, actually, BLDD came in and did a look at it when we had to well, do the, uh, yeah. When we closed the school. Shy did it when we closed Shai the school. Shy did it when we closed the school. school. Yeah. Then the property was tried to, we tried to sell the property in the pride and we didn't get the money that we estimated we'd get in. Tried to sell it with a bunch, tried of, to sell it. With a bunch of conditions. Well, okay. Tried to sell it and we didn't get the money out of it that we did. And uh, Jack Henry tested the water and that found the well. But um, I think there's some truly unique opportunities with that property that we have never really tapped into, which, you know, location, 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 and the ravine around it, which is an in-town in timber, which gives us all kinds of educational opportunities, which we have not utilized uh, with our students for an outdoor classroom and, and those types of things. And, and I'm real reluctant to, to pull the plug on that just because, you know, and, and granted, we won't tolerate lead in any of lead in the water of our buildings, but it's not insurmountable uh, to uh, remedy that. And uh, um, this coming in at the last minute to shave four million off on it, um, like I say, I think that, that that property has some great opportunities for us in the future. A couple of thoughts for you, Phil. The home school program that's there is using the ravine for, for outdoor classrooms. I've had the instructors tell me that, that they enjoy that, to go down there, they use it a lot. Good, well, I, I, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Right. Yeah. I think we can, I think it can be utilized much, much more but well. From my perspective, you have two dissimilar buildings that have been attached to each other there, okay? You have a 50s vintage building that was built very inexpensively, and you have a 1930s vintage building that, that's in serious deterioration because of deferred maintenance. The roofing, the masonry tuck pointing, the plaster on the inside is suffering from moisture penetration. It, that $4 million budget would put air conditioning in a building, and it would only touch and scratch the surface. It may cost more to truly renovate that building than to replace it. So you have to separate the building from the site. We're not talking about the pluses or minuses of that site. We're talking about the pluses and minuses of that building, the way it's built. <coughs> Can we move on to bigger, uh, to kind of a bigger grand scope discussion? Can we just add one thing? Yeah. That I have? Yeah. I do want to make sure that um, we don't. Neglect the fact that we do have homeschoolers that rely on that program. I don't know how many kids are coming into our district for that, but we know kids are going out of our district for that. And um, and if, if we don't provide the service level that they want, they're gone. Right. With their money. But in uh, uh, moving them out of the trailer that they used to live in uh, was a significant upgrade to the quality of the program, the space that's available to them. We know that that's helped retain some of our homeschoolers and maybe add some. So uh, we've had conversations about if we want to truly expand and recapture those students, uh, what options are available to us uh, uh, in order to provide that kind of facility. And, and, you know, all of our students matter to us. We have students in all kinds of different programs, mm -hmm. and we're touching all these different schools, but I don't, you know, I want to make sure that we give equal value to 
kids that are in a different alternative type program and like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether it's the same building or, or where it is, but right. let's be intentional about it. And I agree with that. I think we should be looking at improvements, right? It's not going to improve it. Having said that, I think it's absolutely right for us to signal leaving that building. We can't afford it. You can decide in the future if you want to build a new school there, keep the land, but I think we're exiting the building, personally. I think we should just be transparent about that. This is a, this is a chicken and egg conversation. We should just signal that and get on with the options analysis. And you're just going to get, there's going to be a future affordability discussion that you, we're not going to vote for it, so, especially if we can integrate it into our other buildings that are existing, and it's a better environment. So, um, I just guarantee it. it's, you know, we start talking, this year we're probably fine from a budget standpoint, but you start getting 2% every year, which is probably the future. Um, and yeah, we're doing stuff like this to uh, more increase the size. so. We've made a lot of tough decisions these last few years just to be treading water, and so what are the next few decisions like that? One of them is probably exiting track. So. This would be nice later if we can get I know somewhere, in some notes, some email, some board doc, there's all the different programs that are in track. Yeah. And also knowing that there was a reason where some of those programs were not together. So I, I think that's yeah. also something that people need to realize some of those programs were not together for certain reasons and trying to manage kids on different educational levels. You know, we got seven to 12th graders. Yes. You know, and, I mean, in, in the emotional, you know, this kid has maybe a behavior, it's just kind of emotional. It's a lot because in the end of all having these kind of saying, and then the disciplinary issues. I mean, as a person that has worked with those kids over there, I know it is complicated. It is much more complicated than the public and maybe even our board members understand the complexity of what's going on over there. And so being able to break that down into if those it may be better for those kids to be in separate places to be honest. And so um, yes, we should definitely um, that's something from walking in the door here as a board member has been a great concern to me. So um, but we do want to make sure that whatever we're implementing that they're implemented with fidelity and those kids are getting what they need as well as the staff and that we're getting the staff there as well because that's also a problem is to get staff there, so. and retain. Yeah. And, and actually, you raise a really good point because some of those programs there are served by a very small number of children. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily need an enormous amount of space in any given building. So, you know, at the secondary level, could some programs at the, that serve 9, 12 kids be housed in all four of the high schools? And, and would each high school serve as a home for one of those programs, providing both distance between the programs, but also the ability to integrate into a uh, a gen ed K-12, uh, 9-12 environment. So those are some of the kinds of conversations that we've started having both with ourselves and with some of the community partners um, that we work with uh, as we think about what the alternatives might be. But again, we went uh, not far down that path because we first wanted to have a conversation with you. So as I look at the document, the future facility projects for, S for FMP consideration. Just kind of running through that. Um, you know, I, I look at I look at Tate, and I, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing here is some interest in looking at an athletic facility gymnasium for Tate. Anybody opposed to that? Anybody? Okay. What I think we're also hearing is that Alexander, with our addition of weighted resource allocation, which is a change in the way we do things since the design and the scope of that bill, um, plus looking at the enrollment projections report for future growth and land not even platted out and building permits not even issued in that area, we're going to see exceptional growth in the Alexander area. Um, we have probably also have needs to continue the like, preschool program in that area. So I, I mean, I'm just going to throw out there that I think Alexander, that one is something that should be a, a, a definite focus for us between growth, preschool, weighted resource allocation. The, the last one I'm going to say is that with Borlaug, you know, if we had 1.7 budgeted for four classrooms and it's a 1.9, 
for two and two, um, plus the strong growth potential in the Warlock area, despite what's here because building permits aren't part, or because um, future planet area is not part of it. You know, if you look at 1.9 versus 1.7, that's a $200,000 difference. Try not to, trying to avoid this mission creep thing. I really am. When I look at the rest of it, I think it's, to me, it falls under the, it'd be nice, or we just did something there category. Um, so I, I, have a, I have a tough time. And when it comes to, to, to hills, the, the projections don't necessarily show that. But when I look at Alexander Tate and the slight change in Warlock from 1.7 to 1.9, in addition to you, Dwayne, reevaluating the scope of all the projects on the FMP, we're back at that 190. No longer. A little under. 189. So your reco, I'm just not the My reco is Alexander Tate but and the 184 scope. Yeah. Million dollar scope plus Alexander plus Tate and or log at 1.9 million or whatever. Because I think that we should be utilizing the facility master plan as passed in 2013. Um, with the slight tweaks in 15, and these being slight, <coughs> tweak, slight tweaks that are recommended by you guys, plus the, these potential that I'm throwing out there as our as the compass. That should be, we should be sticking as true to the 2013, 2015, et cetera, et cetera. That's the compass. That's the, that's the part that this whole thing behind us. But some of these other things, it's in the nice to have category, but I don't think it wants to be part of our bottom line. Question. Brian, Brian are, you, are you saying that we would put those projects into the bonds if we did the full enchilada bond, um, but that they wouldn't necessarily occur during the first seven years? They still might be further off of the bond? No. Are you going to push them up timeline? I'm saying, I'm saying that they, well, Borlaug was already planned to be Borlaug, done right, in 2023, 20, I think it was, but um, that they would be part of the next six years. If that's if that's feasible from a, from a project management standpoint, if that's feasible. Well, the only real change is the additions of Tate, and they're already on the schedule. I don't see any problems with that. But I think that we focus on, you know, the idea has been the first four years are funded by X, the last six years are funded by Y. And when we're going for Y, we should focus on that six-year time. So that, one, I just want to clarify, yeah, I wasn't Yeah, sure. no, thank you, thank you. It's one way at this point go around the table. So that would be, uh, that's my reco. Well, it's a miracle that I was going to the same place, so I'm, I'm fine going all in for the bond. And, um, yeah. I'm over here calculating numbers. I think it's 189.7. So it's just under the line that way. But I think uh, Tate is fits the intent, and I think, uh, what you say, we had a policy change that impacted Alexander, and that makes sense now. There's probably some future increases in timing, like it would incur but that could be decided. That doesn't need to be decided today. There could be some other accelerations, but I think if we have that all in the bond and we pass it, then you got options to accelerate. So. If you're going to me, I think I made it pretty clear last time where I was at. So you, where I, would, with, uh, I would be uh, okay with the stuff that Brian recommended. Bill? Um, talking bond right now. Uh, I think it's uh, too big. Um, I uh, feel that if it fails with no clear plan B, we really put ourselves in a, in a problem. And uh, I have and to a certain extent, we're, we're, we're painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You start at one end, you get to the other, you're going back to the other side. And this is, this is on the a lot of Do you have a proposal? My proposal? Well, I'll propose. Um, making sure that need is met and uh, even uh, this is, you know, and I propose that, you know, the construction out there at, uh, for athletics 
at West High. It said we've approved the design, but we uh, delay the construction. Don't turn the dirt, put it on hold. If the bond fails, we go ahead with it. If not, we have that money for actual academic need, uh, immediate. You mean if the bond passes, you go ahead with Right, excuse me. Uh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, but we show the public that we're not holding them hostage and uh, that way. Um, but I, I, have, I have real concerns with just the... Uh, well, what's your proposed project in the size of the bottom? Like, well, I, I, well, like I say, I'm saying, I'm saying, Wes, that that project we put on hold that that frees up eight million bucks. Um, I, I, you know, I continue. We go on. I, I would say we go reduced. I, at this point, I'm not. Some of this stuff is kind of new, and I'm kind of absorbing it. But I, I like I say, I think that you know we're putting it. Uh, we're uh, making it extremely uh, large, and as the one person that was in the post said, we don't all work for the university. And uh, uh, it's got to be a, a big deal. All right, anything else, Chris? Well, it seems like one of the division's uh, disagreements on this is it's about how hard or how easy it will be to pass the bond in different forms. I look at 190 or whatever in that department. And I just think I have a hard time seeing it pass. And you know, I mean you look around Iowa, bonds are failing left and right. Uh, you look back and the biggest bond ever passed, like less than half of that number. The biggest bond in Iowa City that's ever passed has been about a third or less than that number. Uh, it's such a gamble. And I don't think we can count on people to just say, oh, you know, it's for the kids. Yes, vote well, yes. Some people will say that. Some people will look at the thing really carefully and start asking questions. I have a hard time with, uh, with committing ourselves to capacity expansions that won't happen for six or seven years. We don't know what the enrollment's going to be. Uh, I have a hard time with the idea of Alexander getting, you know, committing to, to putting new classrooms there. We don't know what the enrollment's going to be. And we have seats elsewhere on the east side. You can just draw the district differently. Look at the uh, the trailer park uh, on the west side of Alexander. And you know, is that always going to be there? And if Hills is really going to decline in population the way the projections say, you know, there'd be places, ways to redraw those districts. Um, so I just think much more, I think it's a much more of the battle. I would start much smaller. I would make more changes. And I just think a lot of the discussion to me has that feeling to it of the sunk costs fallacy. Well, you know, we put so much into this plan that now we can't really significantly change it. But if it's going to be, you know, I don't know that it was ever really, people ever really gra grappled politically with whether you can do whether you'll get the support for it. Yeah, uh, proposal. So my proposal would be, if it were me, again, I mean, I'm, I'm flexible to a point, but I'd start with a much lower number. It would probably have a man in it. It would have a new elementary school in it. Probably it would have North Central admission of some type in it. And it would have some big east side renovation project, which means either southeast or city. Southeast is the one that's first on the schedule. Um, but city affects, you know, arguably more people. Um, I would, I would change the board decision. I don't think it's just a I don't think you go out to the public and sell that to people. I don't think it ever had the support of the public to begin with. Going into a bond closure with a bond uh, proposal with a school closure, not what they teach in Bond Passage 101. You know, I mean, I don't know why you would choose to alienate that large group of people with so little defense of it and no real transparency of what's going to go on a site. We got people at the listening post saying, well, it's because city needs more parking lots and that's not going to go over big with voters. I mean, I would make a lot of changes. I'd like to see a real commitment to a, a career and technical master plan. You know, I don't think we can just throw, throw things onto this proposal and say it's for career and tech and people need to get thought out. 
that's probably a good start. Yeah, I could be talked into a higher number than that, but I think I'm already up to about 50 or 60 million dollars. Um, you know, I could squeeze more things in there. Maybe be talked into it, but uh, I just, I just don't think we're being realistic about what's going to pass. My request would be the super proposal already. Hmm? Well, uh, I'm happy to write some. I like to write things down, so give me a little time and I can do it. <laughs> but it's I know, that's the problem. <laughs> anyway. Sure. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> so, because I believe that I was elected by people who wanted me to do certain things, um, and I wasn't here, and I was here in 2013, I wasn't a part of that, um, but I've gotten enough feedback from then, and got enough feedback now of knowing our community's desire to invest in our kids, and so, on a personal note, that gives me some hope for society. Um, but um, I do believe that we, my thing is, is I have to have a little faith in, in the folks that have asked me to come here to believe that we have to at least try. I do not want to look back and say all of my doubts, all of my own personal stuff prevented children from having what they needed to be successful in life. And I can't say I believe in equity and then say, oh, just, just a couple of y'all gonna get something. I just, I can't, I can't. Internally, that's a, a conflict within me to believe that I, I, I need to ignore what hundreds and hundreds of hours and tons of people have put out and said that this is important to us. We're willing to do what we need to to pay for this. We realize that we're not going to get hit with this all at the same time. And I know that there's some work on the end of for us to do to go out about getting this passed. And then I also, you know, a part of me, a part of me is kind of like, I keep hearing Craig in my head saying, if we don't have board, you know, if we don't have the board full of supportness, then we're killing it in the water. So a part of me is a little heartbroken that, I mean, and people have their opinions, but it's just this part of me that's like, yes, let's do this and have faith in our, our folks that we can get this past for our kids, and then this is the other part of me to go, this is what can sink us. And so I'm, I'm struggling internally with, with the sinking and the hope <laughs> at the same time. And so I, I would like to see Tate get a gym as a community partner who has paid for Tate students to be able to participate. It's frustrating to know that I'm using my small amount of money to pay for our kids to be able to exercise. That's a problem, so I would love to see that added here. And knowing that I live in the Alexander neighborhood and that there's houses everywhere and there's still building and there's mud everywhere in our neighborhood forever from the building, it's constant building, um, that I know that it's, it's necessary to be able to uh, put those children somewhere because we've known for years at Greenwood has been completely over capacity. That's why we built Alexander. That's why we tried to take some of these pressure points off and they just keep building more dang on houses, which is fine, which is fine. But I'm just saying, with houses come children and children need a place to have equitable places to go and to learn. And, um, and maybe, you know, some of you all haven't had the opportunity to be in my neighborhood, which is probably one of the most diverse neighborhoods in this area. But those children are deserving of equitable opportunities and space as well. So yes, I absolutely agree, and I, I, I don't want I don't want to let those kids down. I don't want to let their families down. So I do agree that we, um, especially now that I see some reductions, and then we've had this opportunity to invest and add for our, some of our more disadvantaged students to be able to add those other projects. I believe that we should go after this bond with everything that we have within us. Um, um, whether everybody agree or not, I'm gonna give this everything I got so we can do this for our children. It doesn't really matter what I think because you've got four votes. So I don't know that it does. I don't know. Absolutely. So um, what I'm going to focus on is if if the project if the plan is to go for the whole enchilada, um, then um, I I would really like to see us figure out what our priorities are in the ordering of the projects, um, and uh, uh, we use the uh, term access to opportunity gaps. 
I'd like, my opinion would be that should be our lens through which we're looking um, and, uh, and, and define what, what fits that. Now, some could say air conditioning fits that, some could say preschool fits that, you know, there's many things you could put in there. But um, I personally would not think um, that putting in extra big art rooms and music rooms should take priority over seats for children that are sharing classrooms in a library, for example, right now in Alexander. Or um, when I hear from the Kirkwood principal that they have a full list of kids that cannot attend preschool because they can't afford it, and there isn't room for them at Kirkwood. That makes me very sad. And I don't see preschool anywhere here. I mean, you're talking about making existing preschool rooms bigger, but I don't see us adding any preschool facilities. Now, if we want to talk about having an impact on outcomes, I don't know that anybody would argue that preschool doesn't have an impact on outcomes. And I, I'm really concerned about that. Honestly, I mean, for me, that would, that would be top of the list because uh, we've got children out there that are just uh, going into kindergarten with no preschool because we don't have the facilities. And that's what Steve told us when we had our um, uh, work, or education, education committee. committee. So that's, that's, the, that's the information he gave us. So I'm, I'm going off of that. <coughs> um, I see, you know, and then, for example, um, I see that Kirkwood's project isn't until 2021, but Garner's art room and music room happens in 2019. And um, I, I guess I wonder why. Why is that? And, and I know you'll, you'll give me the answers, and you know I'll either agree or not agree. But um, but I think if we're going to talk to access to op access to opportunity gaps, then um, my thought would be if we want to do something about the achievement gap, then we better be focusing on that above all. If we're going to say we have a strategic plan that focuses primarily on outcomes and that is the driver for all of our decisions, and that should be the driver in this decision as well for our order of projects. And my only, so we're talking about education, and we're we'll talking about it every day. I'll just tell you my, because I put it in my memoir to accelerate the report of work. Well, you accelerated it, though, only, I mean, it's still, let's see. It, well, let me ask you, no, when, no. What, how far would you accelerate it? Well, I put it in a year. I have no problem accelerating two years, depending on the way. Now you find this like North Central, I push for one year in North Central, you just, once you start to move it and think about it, you move it down two years. Yeah. It's a good job. Four in, yeah. But you know, but here's, the, I'll just give you my perspective. I'm not gonna die on the sword over those because next year, when we pass the bond, you'll have a whole lot more opportunity to accelerate it. And I wouldn't get too tied up in the timing right now. Because really the decision we're making is the bond. You can always, as we do annual updates, you can always choose to accelerate. I think there'd be very good, you know, rationale based on grid day and everything else mm -hmm. to accelerate. But well, that, that was one of the issues with, you know, when I started, I think my proposals are perfectly good to, you know, carve with the bond make it smaller. But definitely it would not enable you next year if the bond passes to accelerate the curriculum. Because it wouldn't be funded. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to accelerate the because it wouldn't be funded. Well, unless it was one of the projects that could replace something else. Yeah, but then we have to go reshuffle. Here's the thing. You, if we go reshuffle the whole deck, everybody gets excited about it. You know, you just change the plan. And there's some elements of stick to it. It says the spirit of 2013. We can always come back and accelerate. And, and my my thought on that would be, we we if we go for the whole thing, um, we've made a commitment that we're doing we're doing the projects. We're not going to back yeah. out of the commitment no, to do that. Um, it's just a matter of when we do it. And I think it's our job as board members who first and foremost think about educational outcomes and what will drive that the most effectively. And, and and I would do, if it were me, I would go beyond just adding a few rooms at Kirkwood. I, I would I would do a needs assessment of the district and um, have, this is part of the reason why I asked about um, the free reduced lunch numbers in our preschools. I, I would find out, do we need more preschool rooms at Alexander? Do we need more preschool rooms at Wood? Do we need a freestanding preschool center somewhere that's accessible to kids that aren't getting preschool right now? What is it, that, and now what you'll all tell me is that there's no way we can do that in two weeks and we gotta have a decision. Um, but it's not in the budget, so, you know. Again, it, all I'll say is if we pass this $190 million geo bond, 
you'll have significantly more flexibility to address those needs. So forward. maybe, you can think I'm crazy, but maybe we add, you know, five million or something that we don't specify where it goes, but we say it's for preschool expansion. Well, I don't think we can do that. Can't do we that. have to specify where it goes. But that's where Apple and Future Save, you will have some dollars in your video to use to do stuff like that. How much, though? But we borrow against what? 60-70% of the money? Yes. What, what is it, two-thirds? It's, it's uh, well, we borrow 75%. We leave 25% for our pay-as-you-go. Are you allowed to use that? Like we use it all the time. Yeah. Where do you think we pay for land acquisition and things yeah. like that out of? We, we use that money all the time. It's when you get there. So it's pay as go right? It's annual. It okay. comes available. I see. When it comes available. So we earmark some of it for sure. TARP payments. That's why I say Pebble. Revenue bond payments, we earmark some of it for life cycle funds. Think about Pebble being half life cycle funds, so it can't do any of it, right? But there's some flexibility. Now, some of the others, you know, but maybe 30% flexible. Pebble is open, yeah. So. I, I, I don't finish, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to just kind of come with Kirkwood. Just, just part of it. Go for it. No, just, just when I'm looking at the enrollment, it looks projected out pretty flat, 360, 370, 380, right? And the addition, it's playing as a, is six classrooms, it's 150 student addition, um, which would give us ample room to do, to address those issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and I'll admit that I had looked at that until you brought it up, so thank you for bringing that. Well, that plus for Right. Well, and, and along with that, I would say, um, I'm glad to know that the projections do not include all of the new developments going in because there's um, several new uh, high density housing things that are going in in Coralville and the Coralville Central boundaries. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe preschool for Coralville Central needs to be shifted to Kirkwood if we can put six rooms in there and make them all preschool. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe there's efficiencies in, in putting them all together. Um, I, I, I don't know, there, it's just something I'm putting out there. Um, yeah, I'm just going to make this one point. Small bond or no bond, a lot less flexibility. We can get this one ninety done, and you can have a lot of flexibility in the future. So yeah, so take that for what it is. Um, for me, it, it's a lot of it's in the, the order of the projects. So I think you, you did ask one question that could be answered quickly. Why is Garner ahead of Kirkwood? Well, it was because of the explosive growth at the time in North Liberty. Mm -hmm. So now we're playing a new elementary school in there that will lessen the burden of that particular building. So, but that's why it was up there is because there was we were running out of seats fast. And and so maybe Garner needs to you know not happen in 2019 since we're putting in a new building. The other thing I wanted to throw in is um, you know I, I think it's responsible to consider the fact that our political landscape right now um, means that vouchers are a real possibility for our state, I hope they don't happen. But it's a real possibility. And I, I do fear a little bit trying to guess where the, you know, where the impact would be on that. I don't know. Um, will our enrollment go down? Will we have fewer students? Will, I, I don't know. I know you all think I'm crazy. But but, but, I mean, let's face it, it's being talked about right now. A bill was introduced already. Um, so, I, I don't know. Just for what it's worth, I'll put that out there. All I can say is you can only make the decision based on the open you know, this week, next week. Yeah, except that with, with the bond, we can't change that decision. Sure, but, you know, just part of the big organization. You know, there's things you know, there's things you know. I don't, I don't think it's any secret that two weeks ago I sat in that chair there and said, you know, we should be going for, I calculated out 120, 125, you were saying 85, I've heard other numbers, and Paul sitting over there saying, all in July. All in, baby. All in, that's right. And uh, for me, you know, that discussion, I, I think was very good that, that that we had that discussion because for me since then you know between the listening posts um, meetings with various individuals around the community electeds 
um, for municipalities and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm not questioning unified support across across multiple municipalities and, and, elect, and elected and groups of elected representatives, which I, I was before. Um, I think that's critical. I think that's really a, a strong message. Um, another thing that I heard was there were people that that, that said, you know, we're gonna we want to volunteer and we want to work to get this bond passage. But we're gonna be enthusiastic if we go all in. Because we realize that that's a broad statement from an education-based community to do that. And and that energy was palpable. Those the energy in those discussions was palpable. I, I just you know, I think had we not had that discussion two weeks ago, we're sitting up here, you know, down in the weeds, looking at all these little details, and, oh, I don't know, should we do this, should we do that? But I think that in the last two weeks, I looked behind us and saw this whole group of people that want us to go all in, people who were energized. So that's, that's why I'm saying all in, but I also say we shouldn't, we shouldn't go above the that 190-ish that we've been talking about forever. <coughs> I've already had discussions with folks saying this is what this is what you know is is on the paper. This is what we've been looking at since 2015. So I just want to give some perspective on. So Steve, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Just, I'm sorry to clarify. If you. Sometimes I think it's important, you know, I, I'm very passionate about supporting kids and so if people have varying opinions, I think that's okay if you have varying opinions. Sure. I'm, not, I'm not, you know, whether it's preschool or more, you know, I mean, I think that that should also be said. It's not like I'm not going to speak to you no more because you don't agree with me because that happens sometimes here and I think it's ridiculous. What, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I think at the end of the day, we all care about, I'm, I'm making assumptions that we care about kids, because it's so, I don't know why you work for school board, because we get so rich sitting here right now. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying that, you know, that we're here for children and we have our various opinions about it. But my hope is that wherever we land and whatever we end up doing, I'm just hoping that we all will support, support the decision and support our kids, because I, I think that's really important. And that's something that I did hear come out at our um, listening post is that people are like, look, if the decision is made, even if you don't like it, let's get behind it and try to lift up things for our children. And so I'm hoping that even if we're talking and having a discussion and we don't necessarily agree with the amount or we don't necessarily agree, then that's fine. But that whatever it is that we decide and we remember that we are a board and we, we are a small percentage of the vote, but at the end of the day, we're here to push and, and uplift our, our district. And so I, 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 that's what I'm hoping from you all as colleagues, that wherever we land, I change my mind tomorrow, that we will be able to, uh, wherever the vote lands, support support it as, a, as an entire board to support our kids. Well, I gotta tell you right away, uh, I'm gonna be the dissenter. As to that principle, there are proposals I can support that aren't the proposal that I would make, but I made it very clear when I was running that I wasn't going to be a cheerleader for whatever the proposal was, no matter what the proposal was. I had real reservations about committing to capacity additions that our projections do not show any need for. And like Lori says, I'm going to start handing out the vouchers tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be committed to those things even if they're six years out. I mean, that's an obstacle. And uh, I apologize when it came around that Mr. Ultimately, the people are going to decide. And uh, I think what Latasha was saying about, you know, <coughs> we're all, and I, I I don't want this to be the type of a thing that uh, if you don't spend $194 million, you don't care about kids. Uh, because that, that shouldn't be what the discussion is about. And uh, I have talked for a long time about a serious commitment for technical education. Um, that's, an, I, I believe, transforming the learning environment. That's part of it, personally. And I think uh, there's a lot of evidence that we're in on as well. 
and uh, before when we were discussing uh, what we wanted uh, special ed on there too. I think that there's up there's going to be uh, needs for those potentially at all of our schools that we need to make sure that that's that's in consideration. And I agree with uh, uh, Lori on the preschool aspect of it. Uh, and we had a presentation at the Ed Committee on that, that there was an express need for extra space. And uh, I think, you know, we, when you look at the projections, and I mean, gosh, we're paying for the projections. Uh, either we, you know, value them or not. And, you know, construction, one spot or another, depends on the economy and uh, who knows, and uh, like I say, if you can predict that, you make a fortune and you can pay for the bond yourself. But, um, I, uh, I have concerns with uh, eliminating existing capacity with the closure of the school and uh, ignoring kind of the numbers that we have where some things are going faster than others, so this we can change that going down the road. But however the community comes out, we will work and make sure that the best is provided for all of our students, every student. So we're at the seven minute warning. So we're going to stop at 10, which we normally do. So Steve, are you clear for next week? Right? So I think we're asking for the item. Well, I'm sorry, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear, really. Did, did I just hear that if the board makes a decision of which we're all part of, that you're not going to support it? Yes. If I don't, if I feel I can't do it, I'm a, I'm a fiduciary administrator to this district. We all do. Yeah, but I, you know, I have to go by what I'm thinking and what I believe about this. And if that seems to me like a really unwise commitment for this if district the board to me, makes a decision. You now, this is the sort of intolerance toward dissent that drives me crazy. It's not this. intolerance. If you have wonderful arguments to make for this bond, it's going to pass. It doesn't matter whether I'm out there agreeing with it or not. Make the arguments. But there's going to be disagreement. I'm, there are some proposals I simply will not support. But I'm not saying everybody has to do it my way. I, there's lots of proposals I could support. Does that um, mean, okay. I just hope people will be asking me. I mean, I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna tell people what I really think about the proposal. I think there's things in there that are really important. I'm happy to say that. But I'm not gonna tell you right now that no matter what the board agrees on, I'm voting yes on it. By all no. I, I don't think I'm saying that. That's not what I'm, I'm saying. Not, I'm saying even if you voted, I was, I was suggesting, because you can't make nobody do nothing. Y'all grown, I ain't your mom. What I'm saying is, is if the board decides that this is what we're going to do, even if you, you know, I'm just saying like, at, at, at some point, if you know, everybody's like, okay, let's support this. If we, are you saying that, my understanding is that you're saying, I don't care if the rest of the board is supportive of this, I'm going to not support it. I don't make no judgment about it. And you know, I think uh, I have not sensed a whole lot of uh, eagerness to compromise, you know? And if you got a couple people on the board who are elected for specific reasons and have real concerns, maybe compromise with them. Hey, maybe you I get to your seven. Oh. That's how you get to seven well, zero, not just by compromise. getting enough people and then trying to shame the other people. I mean, if you go to the voters that way and try to act like they're obligated to vote for the bond or else they're bad people, no. That's not going to work, you know. That's uh, not what was here asking. we are, you know, tonight, one week before we have to settle this. <laughs> somebody asks me, well, what would you like to see? Yeah. Well, guys, come on. We've talked about that September. The, 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 schedule, the schedule is no surprise. Nobody's been really seeking out anything. Check out the work session. So check out the work session in September. The schedule is a schedule. I'm just going to tell you, I put my thoughts in writing. I would have appreciated seeing the kind of proposals. I put out the proposals. Help me come to my final decision, so I would like, appreciate seeing the kind of proposal. But we yeah. have to write it down, but again, I mean, it's getting pretty late. It was pretty late when we started this process. And this is why it's on. <laughs> this is why it's on. You can't have everything decided at any point in time. That's it's why it's an ongoing process. Well, we we'll so Steve, just trying to wrap this up. Yep. So, 
go over what you want us to do, so I make the sure sheet. I yep. I think we said more log the one point nine. Mm -hmm. Check those numbers. He's going to check. Dwayne's going to yeah. check the numbers. He's going to swap. Check. I'm sure I just left it off. Yep. You need to swap. Add Alexander and add Tate. Yep. Are we moving back? I can't remember what we went this now. Well, we proposed moving it down a year already, but maybe we need to do more. I, I, I don't think there'd be any misalignment to push it further. But and I, is it all right with you if we look at, since we're adding Warlog, Alexander, and Tate in there, uh, is it all right if we, uh, with Alexander and Tate, look at the timeline just sure. to make sure yes. that we balance? So that's from a workload standpoint, we want to make sure we can do it. Yeah, that's one of the possibilities. Let's put it this way. If you got a proposal, great. Yep, we will. But I just want to, well, you might see some more great dates in there because we might try to, Let's make sure it's uh, vetted. Yes. You're sufficiently, you know. Yep. I want to throw so much flexibility in there. Back up on it. And I put in my vote to move them. Right. So that, that's what I was hearing. Mm -hmm. That's what my notes say. I mean, we've got kids in classrooms that are, you know, taking yep. up the library. Understood. So well, we just want we'll want to look at what's <laughs> in 18, 19, 20 if we're going to move them up. In there, so I just want to make sure I have permission to look at time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Up? Special accelerations. Yes. I understand. All right. Anything else for today? So yeah. next week. So next week when we come back, I mean the decision we got to make is the geo fund, right? And that's a formal vote. Formal vote. We never got to a second agenda. I think real quick we should take What's a second agenda. Well, a separate item combined that has some attachments. I mean, it was all the same conversation I thought. Okay, so there's nothing for somebody we should take now. basically what we The other thing is um, we, we never really discussed what a plan B would be. I don't know if that's something we want to discuss at some point. Like if, uh, I, I can't remember who suggested it. Somebody suggested we maybe put the halt on yes, current I projects. I suggested that the, uh, we have to get my suggested Penn and West Highway Mathematics. The, uh, save that money in reserve as a possibility possibility that the public fails to reach 60% and we have money to make sure that everything comes to a screeching halt and that the new uh, elementary and, and those uh, man and those things that we have some type of contingency. I understand that I have no interest in stopping the current project myself. Because you're just going to delay the trip back to air conditioning hours. And how many, and, and I'm, uh, well, I'm not going to fence with anybody on AC, but before the facilities master plan, the district didn't close a single day for a heat. And if we had adopted a start date of the day after Labor Day, with our, in the last 10 years, we would have only missed school three days. Well, except for the one later in June. Excuse um, me? Except for the June days, you would have missed it. No, 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 those, those would have been included. That includes June. Those were the questions I asked earlier. 
I think what Chris is saying, if you started later in September, you would go later into June. Yeah, we checked those later June days for weather, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Just what? <coughs> now again, early dismissals are like the tip of the iceberg, right? No, I, I, I understand, and, and and like I say, you know, transforming the 21st century learning environment, uh, I believe, includes uh, current technical education that meets a five-minute bell schedule. You have a lot more options with that. Like fastest hundred ninety nine million dollars on. Like I say, the public will decide. Yep. Yeah. So the earliest that a, that a, that a um, plan B could come out would be put to the public would be like April, right? April of 2018. Yep. For a vote? Yes. Six, six months. Fails. Six right. months. You have to wait six months. And so we would miss the February date that's allotted to us. So we would have to move that to the April. So we'd miss a whole bidding season too, as far as construction. Construction season. Uh -huh. And a late start on the next one. So I think. All right, we're at our 10 o'clock. Anything else for tonight? So just clarification, next Tuesday, special meeting. We'll have those numbers back and we'll basically a motion on what we're gonna go for. Okay, the, mo the motion we have to have is a robot. Debates in the other facilities master plan stuff for do it or leave it, but I think we gotta have a robot. As a meeting on work session? Right. And I, I, it is a meeting. Yeah, sorry, there's a lot of confusion. Right. So, so it's actually like had community <laughs> comments and it was in that, but it, it's going to be a regular board meeting. Yes. Yeah. Tina, motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. There's a lot of stuff. All in favor say aye. 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 A